Hello, and welcome to Trigonometry. We're going to be doing outcome T1 today, uh, but before we even start on T1, we need to do a little bit of review. So we're going to take a look at the first couple pages of work in T1, which actually reviews some earlier concepts from the year before. Enjoy. Okay, so this is the trig review. Triangles are labeled by their vertices. Those are the corners, we could say. Uh, so for example, triangle ABC is the triangle that connects points A, B, and C. Okay, that's the labeling. Angles can be named uh, by the specific vertex. That's the singular for vertices. By specific vertex, for example, angle A is written angle A. Okay, uh, there's another naming system, uh, and that is by the three vertices that form the angle, i.e. angle A can be named BAC, in our triangle up here, BAC connects B to A to C, okay, or I could name it CAB, starting at C and connecting to A and then to B. So we could name it C, A, B. The second version of naming angles is a little more formal, but can come in a lot very handy. Next, sides can be named one of two ways. Um, we can name it based on the vertices that create a side. For example, the side A, C is the side that connects A and C, okay? We can also name sides by the lowercase letter of the vertex opposite the side. In other words, side AC could be labeled side little b, okay? Interesting. All right, so that's the naming that we have for naming conventions. When we refer to a specific angle, say we're talking about this angle here, we can have we use certain words to talk about the sides. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. That's the longest side of a right triangle. The opposite side is the opposite of a particular angle, like angle A. The name for the opposite would change positions depending on which angle we're talking about. So we have to be clear, we're talking about this angle here, angle A. And the adjacent, well, that is the side that is adjacent to angle A. So we'd say it's the adjacent of angle A. The next thing we want to recall is the Pythagorean theorem. This is the classic statement of the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But what does that mean? Well, A and B... Is in a, are in a right triangle, and those are the, sh the shorter sides called the legs of our right triangle. C is referring to the hypotenuse. So we have to be very specific when we say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We really may mean the leg squared plus the other leg squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. Okay. Uh, we may also recall the three trigonometric ratios. So those are given by the old classic so ka to uh, You may recall this classic word or acronym that the sine of any angle is its opposite divided by its hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent of any angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent. And so we kind of wrote it over here, a little chart to remember that by. Okay, we want to give you some practice here in finding various sides and angles. Okay, and so there's six different problems for you to attempt over here. Um, and so I'm going to let you try these problems first. And then if you're having trouble, go back to our grade 10 website and you can take a look at trigonometry and we have a few videos on finding sides and finding angles and I'll take up these questions momentarily once you've had a chance to try them yourselves. So go ahead and pause the video now. 
Okay, since this is for review, you can skip this section, but I'm going to do one question in full. Here we have a side that's the length of 10. This is the hypotenuse. We're dealing with an angle over here that's 60 degrees. And so this x that I'm looking for is the opposite of that angle. Well, which ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? That's the sine. So we could say that the sine of our angle C is opposite over hypotenuse. Let's replace the things we know. That's the sine of 60 degrees equals opposite x divided by hypotenuse 10. Isolating x, we multiply by 10 on both sides. We get x is equal to 10 times the sine of 60. And then it's just a matter of typing that into our calculators. So I'll do that now. I get 10 times the sine of 60. And that gives me 8.66. Okay. That's side x. I'm going to skip now to a different problem here and go all the way down to question D, since this is a problem where I'm trying to find a side value, or sorry, an angle value now. I don't know angle D, and I'm looking for angle D. Okay, so uh, let's see, what do I know? Well, this side here that I just circled is not the opposite, it is the adjacent now of angle D. It's right next door to the angle. And over here, this 60 is the hypotenuse. So the cosine of any angle, such as angle D, is defined as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's replace what we know. The cosine of angle D, which I'll just write now as x, our unknown x, is equal to 45 for the adjacent divided by 60 for the hypotenuse. To actually find this x value, if the cosine of x is 45 over 60, then x is the cosine inverse of 45 over 60. And so x is, well, it's now a matter of typing into my calculator. So I do the cos inverse of 45 over 60, and hopefully you're going to get 41.4 degrees. For the rest of this review, I'd like you to attempt the other four problems and come to class with those problems attempted and we'll, we'll take them up together. Okay. In addition, I'll have an extra handout for you to review right angle trigonometry. I just want to look though at this example too as a brief kind of extra example. And again, you can choose to watch this or not depending on your skill level right now in trigonometry. We want to calculate the length of side BC. Well, how could we do that? We don't seem to know enough about this triangle. Well, if we use this cutoff here and we call this, say, point D, we could find the distance between C and D and we'll call that X. We could also separately find the distance between B and D, and we'll call that Y. If we knew those two distances, we'd add them together, and that would give us the length of side BC. So, how do we calculate this? Well, in blue, let's calculate Y. We know that we're looking for Y, which is the opposite of our 60-degree angle, and we know side 8, which is the adjacent of our angle 60 degrees. Oops, adjacent. Okay, so we could say that the tangent of our angle 60 degrees is equal to the opposite y divided by the adjacent 8. And so therefore, y is equal to 8 times the tan of 60, which gives us 13.86 centimeters. Okay. On your own time now, you can also find x. And then to find the total of the two sides, you add these two together, x and y. Why don't you do that as well and bring that in to class 
to check. Good luck.